Welcome to the show, Five Shark Fam. I'm AJ. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly, and we are directly at the end of the season. It is the business end. Decision day is looming on Saturday. We will have the preview later on in this show. Uh, We will get into the news first, but before all that, let's give some shout outs to our Patreon members who have signed up in the higher tiers uh, you have Gavin Marshall, you have Andrew Rowicki, Jordan Beck, Nal Faruqi, Ariel Acosta, and Chris James. Shouts out to you guys. Salute to you guys. But uh, yeah, you guys are the lifeblood and keeping us going. You can join our Patreon with our fun new tiers at patreon.com slash TV. We have some... Very exciting things coming up in the off season and for the next season as well. So definitely you do not want to miss out. But uh, also as well, if you're new, remember to smash that sub button. We're on the road to 10,000 subs. So uh, yes, get in there and help us. Uh, We would be massively, massively grateful for you to help us get to that goal. But Let's get into those news, and so FC Juarez, they played LA United uh, on Saturday uh, before this week, and they defeated LA United 2-1, Tristan Muyamba, he scored, and a familiar face in Manuel Castro also scored for FC Juarez as well, definitely very odd to uh, see the former Montenegro and LA United player, but uh, yeah, of course, as well, though, no one was really able to see it. It was just a friendly, played at the training grounds, Uh, no fans were allowed, but uh, yeah, you know, some match fitness to get ready for FC Cincy, but uh, getting into the next bit of news, Caleb Wiley, he made the U22, or the... uh, the 22 under 22 MLS list, and he was at number nine. Congrats to Caleb Wiley. I mean, yeah, this kid, what more can you say? He He's a fullback that pretty much has been killer for us, uh, whether he's been playing uh, at the left wing or at left back. He has been incredible this season and really come into his own defensively really sound. I mean, just a a guy who looks fiery and, yeah, super young. Like, this kid has the whole world in front of him, and it's exciting to see. Uh, Another homegrown for LA United, another left back. Uh, But, yeah, number nine in that MLS under-22 list. Uh, So, uh... Yeah, getting into the MLS Cup playoffs and the seeding and how it looks like right now, Atlanta United are in sixth. They have to do some business uh, in order to stay in sixth. They have to get a result. Uh, So basically, if Atlanta United loses, unfortunately, uh, yeah, and if Nashville SC wins, then... Uh, we would be facing Orlando City uh, in the first round of the playoffs, uh, the non wild card round, wild card round rather. But uh, yeah, the uh, the new format also uh, is of course uh, where it's round one consists of a best of three series. So the higher seed gets two home games uh, if they need it. Uh, but yes, uh, best two out of three essentially. So. Uh, Home away home is how that would go for the higher seeded team. So LA United as well, right now we are uh, pretty much penned to face or penciled to face Philadelphia Union. Uh, There is also the possibility of facing the Columbus crew if some other results go the other way. So yeah, there's definitely, uh, (laughs) you know, the, the fact that you have three different possible opponents uh, it's not exactly something that uh, we want to be dealing with, uh, especially, 
Yeah, Columbus Crew just looks so scary. I mean, that match that we played against them uh, at home where they just bossed us around and the possession that they had at our home, very, very worrying. I mean, they're a team that had a very good transfer window as well. I mean, arguably, possibly had the the best sec the, the second best transfer window uh, next to Inter Miami. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those where there's, they're all pretty tough teams. I mean, Philadelphia Union, uh, I feel like we've played them pretty tough. And while we haven't gotten all the results that uh, we would have preferred with some game state issues, as well as uh, a blown penalty call on a handball, those type of things could have drastically changed the match in Chester, Pennsylvania, but as well, I mean, Orlando City, we haven't really played them lately, so it's kind of a mystery how we would match up, but, you know, them being in second is definitely something that, uh, yeah, it's going to be very tough assignments uh, with their type of form, and also, I mean, you know, they're that type of team that uh, we want to beat, you know, LA United, uh, it's kind of our traditional rivalry, forced rivalry, or uh, you know, actual rivalry, however you want to cut it, uh, it's a team that LA United wants to beat. And that's the difficulty here, is uh, this is a team that, whew, I mean, recently have uh, yeah played us well at home at the Benz as well. So, I mean, it's every assignment that uh, we could possibly be matched up against is uh, does have their banana peels. And, you know, for us, we could be that banana peel for the other team as well because, obviously, we've been pretty active uh, in our transfer window to really transform the team in the business end. And, yeah, the additions of Saba Lapsanite and... Shonda Silva, Tristan Muyamba, uh, they've really made us into a different looking team that could surprise some people, uh, but we need to put it all together. And defensively, we're still a little suspect. So that's the uh, the crux of it, and that's the issue. But uh, yeah, in terms of the rest of the, uh, the playoffs, the MLS Cup playoffs, it looks like this. So the first team to win two out of three matches will advance to the next round, which is single elimination. And if a match is tied at the end of regulation, no extra time will be played. Teams will participate in kicks from the penalty spot to determine the winner. So yeah, it's, uh, it's do or die, and it's gonna be very, very interesting. But uh, let's move on into the updated salary guide that was released by the MLS Players Association. And yeah, it's very interesting in terms of the players at the top of a lot of lists. Uh, Lionel Messi is making an absurd amount, uh, somewhere in the 30,000 apparently. Uh, 20 to 30,000, or 30,000, 20 to 30 million uh, for just his short time here uh, already this uh, not even a full calendar year but uh, for LA United the highest paid players are Thiago Almada at 2.332 million Ezekiel Barco who's still on the books at 2.22 million Yorgos Yakomakis he makes 2.16 million Saba Lapsenitze uh, he's at 2.15 Miles Robinson is at 1.4 million and so that's definitely <laughs> fascinating because yeah i mean you know the whole uh, dp conversation or if he's gonna stay at atlanta united well his salary uh, his contract will definitely have to go up and that's what makes it very difficult he's already the fourth highest paid uh defenseman in mls uh that's uh, underneath Thiago Martins of NYCFC, Walker Zimmerman of Nashville SC, of course, and Matt Miazga of FC Cincy. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you might think that, uh, you know, Robinson might be trying to get some of that uh, Zimmerman DP 
money over two million but yeah i mean that's if he stays in mls right now it's probably in his best interest to go to europe if he can make that move but uh yeah it's definitely fascinating and uh yeah uh some of the other guys shonda silva makes 524.5 course he's on loan and it's just a partial season so uh he might be a dp as well though if he uh did sign permanently jamal tiare he makes 1.072 million that's that's a lot that's a lot for essentially he might play two or three games for us that's uh yeah Oof. but uh, yeah, hopefully he is a player that uh, can help us in the playoffs, especially, yeah, you know, coming off the bench. Hopefully he can, uh, you know, score a goal for us and do something. But, uh, yeah, as well, you know, Jamal Tiari, he did uh, get in concussion protocol. Uh, apparently he is back in training this week. And so, yeah, he is in contention to be selected in the squad for FC Cincinnati. Uh, and Tristan Muyamba, he's at 491.6 uh, thousand, so essentially, or 491,000 is probably better. But uh, yeah, so uh, definitely surprising stuff. Which one, which player is the most surprising for you? Curious. Let us know in those comments below. But uh, yeah, the international break is over. That's finally, in my, in my opinion. Because, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a break that definitely interrupts the season. And it, it does get kind of disruptive, I feel like. But uh, the most important thing is that no one got hurt. Everyone came back healthy. Miles Robinson, of course, uh, went uh, with the U.S. men's national team. Uh, yeah, they beat Ghana, but lost to Germany. Caleb Wiley, he went with the United States Olympic men's national team or the youth national team u23s uh they won uh versus mexico and japan uh luis abram played for peru yorgos yakamakis scored a bullet header for greece uh and saba Lapsenice, he played for georgia got an assist and uh tiago amada he played for the argentina u23s and uh, yeah, captain the side, war number 10. So definitely, uh, yeah, glad to see them all come back without incidents. And hopefully we can uh, get a good clean match where everybody's uh, unscathed against FC Cincinnati. But uh, on to the last and uh, but not least a bit of news is that LA United announced the signing of uh, midfielder Nick Firmino to the first team uh, with a contract through the 2026 season. And uh, yeah, you know, the uh, LA United 2 player, he earned a spot on the MLS Next Pro's best 11. Uh, he also uh, led LA United and uh, as well... He uh, broke a record or set the record for most goals for LA United 2 with 16 goals for this season and had six assists. And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, man, the uh, just a player that's uh, really killed it for uh, LA United 2 and had a lot of people clamoring for him to get more chances. He, of course, made his MLS debut and scored uh, a header to uh yeah in his in his debut i mean it's just yeah like storybook stuff but uh yeah carlos bocanegra he mentioned that nick is a player who has continued to improve and perform at a high level during the past two seasons capped off by his mls next pro best 11 honors he's a versatile midfielder with a good engine who has a nose for goal we're excited to continue to watch his development at the club so uh yeah this uh this is the type of player that, I mean, yeah, Nick Firmino, he can play uh, pretty much anywhere in midfield. And, yeah, it's uh, maybe not a defensive midfielder. But, uh, yeah, he is a guy that, uh, yeah, can get back uh, up and down and has an eye for goal. And, you know, we, do, 
we don't have that currently in our uh, in our midfield. So it's uh, it's definitely a welcome player to uh, to be able to call on for depth uh, and not have to go into uh, you know kind of weird uh, structures MLS structures to be able to get him in the squad. So definitely well deserved. And Nick Firmino, he uh, tweeted out or X out, however you want to call it. Uh, quote, extremely excited and blessed to announce that I have signed with Atlanta United. I want to thank God, my family, my coaches, and everyone that has helped me reach this goal. Put God first and everything else will fall into place. The work continues. Uh, red heart, black heart. So, end quote. Uh, yeah, Firmino, I mean, uh, yeah, he's, uh, He's Brazilian, but he is very well spoken in English, and yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's going to be very exciting to uh, see him in the first team. So uh, that does it for the news, and it gets us into the mailbag. And you guys sent in these questions through IG Story. Please continue to do so, and we might answer your question in the future. So first question comes from, uh, let's see, it says Joe Sims. Uh, or Josie Sims, 18. What do you think ATL must do to overcome what looks to be Philly in the first round? Yeah, I mean, they're a team that have played us tough. They play with that funky midfield diamond. Uh, yeah, we when we played against them, uh, I mean, I think we had some of the better chances uh, earlier on, but uh, yeah, you know, it just kind of, uh, kind of flipped on its head. We had a comeback that, I mean, we just kind of really uh, kind of ran out of time there. Uh, and it's unfortunate. I mean, it's it's a team that have kind of had our number, but I have a feeling that, you know, they're that team that maybe we can overcome. And uh, yeah, on the Scarves and Spikes podcast, which I was a guest on uh, this week, uh, I believe it was uh, Sydney that mentioned that, uh, or maybe it was Tyler that mentioned, yeah, maybe there's that kind of Red Bulls effect where we, you know, having played them a bunch and them having had our number, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's probably a different way that we can play them and maybe with more prag pragmatism that, uh, yeah, we might be able to kind of overcome and slay the dragon, so to speak. So uh, I think there's some different ways that I think we can uh, maybe overload our midfield a little bit more, uh, yeah, play a little bit more compact and really hit them on the counter. I think we have the weapons to do that. So uh, it might be, you know, something that we try against FC Sensi to really see if it can... Uh, can play well in this cup competition but uh yes all right so next question is from chambre poppy he asks what's the best move the front office didn't make this season very very interesting question uh oh i mean i would say i would say ronald hernandez uh not moving him on even though you know he takes up an international spot, he's a fullback. But I mean, we essentially moved on Andrew Gutman, and we only have pretty much Ronald Hernandez as our backup fullback. And yes, he can play on left, on the left, and on the right, and as a wingback. I mean, I think it's yeah, it's a good move to have kept him because he uh, yeah can spell either side and has been fairly kind of useful in terms of uh, you know. I think decent defensively and, uh, you know, in attack, like contributes a little bit too. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, Ronaldo Hernandez not being moved on and uh, kind of providing that depth at multiple positions with that versatility is the player that's, uh, yeah, it's the best move the front office did not make. But uh, next question comes from Alex Brunel, 08. Do you think we have any real chance of winning the cup? or even making the finals. This is going to be tough. I mean, man, you know, we uh, we have we have our work cut out for us for any team that we face, whether it's Philadelphia Union, Columbus Crew, or Orlando City. 
uh, we're the underdog. We're, yeah, very much, uh, you know, even though our salary, uh, I think, you know, the, the total salary of this club, it should be a lot more uh, expectations. But, uh, yeah, you know, it definitely... It definitely is this. Uh, we have underperformed for much of the season. LA United have set forth goals of, you know, uh, hosting a, uh, a home playoff match, or you know, in this iteration, it should have been where we were top four or better, uh, you know. But unfortunately, we didn't hit those goals, and so I think if we have a real chance, I'm not sure we do. But, uh, you know, heart and mind say different things. I, of course, hope that we can get as far as the finals and win another MLS Cup. I think we have some weapons to be able to do that. Always the question, at least this season, is do we have the resilience in defense to be able to do that? And that's the thing, you know, good defense wins championships, it wins cups. And so it's going to be really, really difficult if we don't play a slightly different way and with a little bit more solidity at the back. But uh, yeah, next question comes from Terminus United 83. Do we try to resign Miles again before the season is over? I mean, th there's a there's a contract on the table for Miles Robinson, apparently, from uh, the front office, and uh, it's been there for maybe a couple years. I don't know if the offer has changed, but uh, Robinson has not taken it. So, I mean, ultimately, you know, I don't know if he is going to resign. And like I said earlier, it's probably in his best interest to go to Europe. But um, yeah, you know, obviously he will be greatly missed. But some have said that, you know, he's uh, had a little bit of a. Uh, regression to the mean a little bit this year and uh, you know I don't know I mean I think uh, it's kind of been a case where you know with that uh, Achilles heel kind of returning from injury uh, he did look pretty damn good earlier in the season but uh, yeah you know um, it's still just he's just come back from that Achilles injury so uh, there, there could still be a little bit of uh, kind of getting back into form for, you know, from that injury. But uh, next question comes from Lawson Say 04. Do we truly have enough to win it all? Goose isn't his old self, and Lennon doesn't know he's a right back. Uh, I'll address the Lennon doesn't know he's a right back first. Uh, I think that's a little bit harsh. He's been. I think very solid defensively and getting better at his defensive craft uh, throughout the season. And, uh, you know, yeah, he's been given instruction and license to bomb forward because he is such a player that, you know, has the ability to affect the final third. And so, you know, it's one of those things where four goals, 10 assists, it's nothing to scoff at from a right back. Uh, yeah, you know, there might be some moments where uh, he's not maybe positioned the best, but he always makes up for it in his work rate. And so, yeah, he ain't known for Mr. Consistency for nothing. But uh, Goose definitely is not his old self. It's, uh, yeah, pretty much anything, you know, not shot right at him. It's pretty difficult for him to make that save for the most part. Uh, yeah, kick saves have been incredible from him, though. But uh, yeah, do we truly have enough? I don't know if we have enough in the back yet. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously, if we can put it all together, you know, we can hope things things might happen. Good things might happen. But uh, yeah, so last question comes from Micah the Guru. What do you expect from our back line next season without Guzan and Miles most likely? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Guzan probably... Uh, still stays, but I think, you know, if we can find somebody that's younger, that's uh, more of a shot stopper, it would definitely help our back line. Uh, Miles Robinson, like I said, is good as gone, probably. Uh, Juanjo Parata, he might return to Tigres. Uh, Luis Abram, 
uh, would be that stalwart. I know uh, the club has also mentioned that they're pretty high on Noah Cobb. Uh, so, you know, he might be somebody that gets uh, more looks in the first team next season. Uh, but, yeah, we probably have to you know, get another uh, center back that's more, more uh, I would say, uh, has that experience and maybe some MLS experience as well. But we'll see. But I think, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit of a new look uh, center back pairing for sure. Uh, but, yeah, definitely will be interesting. But anyway, uh, that does it for the mailbag and gets us into the match preview. And it is decision day on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. LA United versus FC Cincy at TQL Stadium. And yeah, it's the final match of the season. And yeah, we have the toughest assignment. We have the top team in the MLS and yeah they have already secured the number one seed in the east and uh, won the supporter shield of course and uh, yeah have the best record they are a team that just are purring um, I mean yes uh, forum hasn't been the most incredible lately but uh, yeah they're still a team that they beat us unfortunately earlier in the season uh, August 30th they beat us 2-1 at the Benz so you know they uh, they're they're just a side that kind of has that class at the moment. Uh, they really weren't shook, you know, when we uh, when we pretty much had a lead and yeah they were a team that uh, yeah really played us tough at home and that's yeah they're <laughs> at TQL it's gonna be even harder. Uh, yeah their fans are very good and they will no doubt be rocking. Uh, but the real question is, will FC Cincy rest their players? And yeah, I mean, essentially, they don't have a ton to play for. You know, the season's already pretty much a wrap in that sense. But uh, with that bye week, I mean, it might be really wise for them to kind of just, uh, you know, play their entire uh, starting squad. Uh, they're starting 11 and then maybe rest some guys in the second half if they are up so yeah you might imagine that they will come out guns blazing try to score as many goals as possible and really put us to the sword early and make this a laugher but yeah LA United I mean I think we have some some things that we will want to try and uh you know having uh of course made the playoffs but now uh you know, we're kind of playing for our position and seating. So it is going to be very difficult, uh, you know, in terms of this assignment. Gonzalo Pineda, he mentioned that, uh, you know, in terms of the mindset, it's focusing on, uh, yeah, how LA and I can force the other team to come back to the game uh, or come back to the Benz in a must win game. Uh, and yeah, the. In terms of what Pineda said, the winning away mentality uh, was a big focus going into the playoffs, no matter who they face. And uh, that focus has been on controlling pace and being aware of when to slow down and settle and when to use the strength in attack. So, uh, yeah, you know, the roster right now, he says, allows for more flexibility with positioning, tactics, etc. And, uh, yeah, he, he said also, we know the first game will be away in the playoffs so we can take this one as the best preseason we can have against the best team in the league away it's fair i mean that's uh pretty much it's a test on saturday to see how well we can do on the road against a team that's above us in the standings we've essentially been some flat track bullies a little bit and played a lot of the teams below us very well you know put uh, huge goal numbers against those type of teams, but against higher seeded teams in the East, we have not done the business. And it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be the biggest test, I think. Uh, United against uh, Lucho Costa, who always seems to have our number, and Brandon Vasquez as well. Of course, the former Five Stripe. He, man, he's, uh, he's been hitting... Uh, on a lot of cylinders and is a 
really, really great striker for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a team that's uh, it's as tough as it gets for a decision day. No one else has a tougher, literally. We have the toughest assignment for decision day. But uh, yeah, you know, us having already secured a spot in the playoffs, it at least mitigates any of the anxiety, maybe, in terms of that. But yeah, LA United, yeah, uh, there are some things that we still have to prove, and that's going to be the interesting bit, is who we play uh, in our starting 11. Because yeah, uh, we have every available player. Uh, even Oz Ozzy Alonso was back in full training. Jamal Tiari as well, back from concussion protocol. So uh, yeah, literally it could be where, I mean, some of the guys from, uh, you know, the big travels uh, from the international break, they might have to, uh, you know, they might be rested or something. But, you know, I'm not so sure about that. I think it's going to be our first choice. So, Brad Guzan between the sticks, Brooks Lennon, Caleb Wiley in, at fullback positions, Robinson and Abram in the center back pairing, Hosetu and Moyamba, and... Uh, uh, the midfield, along with Thiago Amado, of course, and Saba Lapsenitze and Shonda Silva on the wings with Yorgos Yakomakis up top. So, uh, yeah, you could maybe see maybe somebody rested, maybe Saba, but uh, I think, yeah, you kind of have to see the continuity, see how it can play together. Uh, we haven't really been able to put forth that first choice 11 a ton we want to see a little bit more of the chemistry build and you know that's the only way is to get them give them minutes together so uh yeah in that let's get into that score prediction heart and mind say two different things i think you know ideally we can uh you know maybe subvert some expectations and uh you know maybe maybe not ideally but uh hopefully anyway get a 3-2 win uh i i think there's gonna be goals no doubt uh it's gonna be probably a shootout uh but of course famous last words as i say that it's probably not gonna be but uh my mind says that it's a 2-2 draw uh you know there will be goals but i think ultimately uh you know, both teams from the international break, there's maybe going to be a little bit of fatigue setting in. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, yeah, just uh, some guys being rested. And so, you know, the potency in both attacks will probably be a little bit mitigated. So, uh, you know, after I think some scoring early on, it will probably uh, go into an affair that pretty much sees out the match as a draw. But, uh, yeah, in that sense, we would have to be, uh, yeah, if we uh, have this result, we would be relying on, uh, you know, some fate. Nashville pretty much uh, hopefully not doing anything against the New York Red Bulls. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh, how it goes. Uh, but what do you guys think? Let us know in those comments below. But, guys, that is the episode there and there uh except for the question of the day so the question of the day is which team would you rather face philly columbus or orlando city let us know in those comments below looking forward to what you have to say so guys that is the episode remember to uh, like share comment subscribe i've been aj thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video <laughs>